Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will create a Laravel CRUD app using Laravel 11. But before diving right into code, let me give you a quick demo of the website that we are going to build. So here we have the listing of all our blogs. If I want, I can also view a single blog. I can go back to my home page using the above nav bar. I can even add a new blog, right? But without specifying anything, if I hit submit, it will throw me validation errors, right? So now if I specify the title with some gibberish, let's say, and hit enter. So it is now giving me error just for the content field. But as you can see that we have preserved the title and summary, right? Now if I give some content here and hit submit. So we got the message block created successfully. Now, if I come at the very bottom, you can see we have our blog here. Now, if I want, I can also edit this blog. So let's say I will change this title to let's say one, 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 one like this. If I hit submit. So we get the message blog edited successfully. And here is the changed data, right? Now I can go back to my home page again. I can also delete blogs like this with the ID three. If I Click on delete. Block deleted successfully and the block has gone right. If I refresh this page, so the blog is no more there and we also remove the flash message, right? Okay, so the topics that we are going to touch are these topics. First, we will see Laravel 11 installation. We will set up our application and also connect our application with our database, right? Then we will run the application. We will also talk about models, why we need models and how we can uh, leverage our models. We will talk about migrations, how we can create migration files for our database, uh, for our tables. That is basically we will create the schema for our tables. We will talk about factory, how we are going to use factory to create some dummy data for our tables. We will also implement controllers and build our own resource controller for the CRUD operation for handling various operations like read update delete and all we will also build a view we will talk about view also we will build a dynamic layout okay so it's also interesting and at the last we will also see how we handle the routing of our application using routes right so i hope you're interested now let's jump into code and start building this all right guys so let's start building our cred application in laravel first let's open laravel.com website where we get the official documentation of laravel so let's click here. So the latest version of Laravel is Laravel 11. All right. So we will build this CRUD application using the latest version of Laravel that is 11. So if I scroll down below uh, here, we can see the command to create the Laravel project. But what you should have to create this project, you should have PHP composer installed in your local system and MySQL server as well. So you can uh, install all these individually or you can install a XAM server on your local system. Then what you have to do, then you need to run this command inside the stdocs folder, right? Because that is the uh, web server that your local system understands, right? Or if you install PHP composer and MySQL server uh, globally, not through uh, XAM, then you can run this command from anywhere and create the project anywhere in your computer, right? All right. So let's copy this command, open command line, and then you can, from command line, you can navigate to whatever folder you like. Okay, let's hit desktop. Okay, inside this folder, we will run our command. Okay, like Laravel CRUD app. Okay, so the command is composer because it's a composer command, create project. We are telling composer that we are going to create a project. What type of project we are creating? We are creating a Laravel project. Okay. And the name of the project will be Laravel CRUD app. So this is basically not a Laravel uh, command. This is a composer command, right? Through composer, we are uh, creating a Laravel project. Okay. So if you hit enter, it will start creating the project. I have already created the project. It's inside this folder only, uh, desktop PyT. So if I open VS code right here, okay. So you can see I have that opened in my VS code, right? All right. You can click your file, open folder, and select the project that you have created. All right. So if you go to the composer.json file, 
okay it will show you the version of all the dependencies you have in your system in your laravel application so we are using php 8.2 version laravel version is 11 okay all right so this is the basic info that you should have uh, like what versions you are running for building the project all right so the next thing i like to do here is that to configure my database so in laravel 11 version 11 there is a slight change previously we used to get here like mysql like this and this was not commented but in laravel 11 it's by default uh, sqlite and this connection other connection strings are closed commented right so just modify this i am using mysql database in this case uh, the db host is localhost this id uh, ip the port is 3306 the database name okay so we can name our database here only uh, it will prompt us when we try to run this application it will prompt us that do you want us to create this name database in the actual database then we'll say yes okay currently this database doesn't exist in my mysql server laravel crud app db all right so my db username is root and my password is this right so in your case if you have not configured your uh, root and password in your mysql database then by default it should be root for the username and password should be left blank okay all right in my case this is the credentials all right everything looks good let's close this now open a terminal here all right now first let's run our application and see whether it's running or not so the command is php artisan serve okay we always use artisan commands to uh, manipulate create various kinds of components for our laravel project right so it's a command line tool for our laravel application php artisan serve will run our application so it is running our server laravel server application on this ip with 8000 port so if i open this here okay so it is saying laravel cred app db unknown database okay so what should we do we should stop this uh, i stopped it using control plus c in windows in uh, mac you can use command plus c in your keyboard right and to clear this control plus l all right the first thing we should do is we should migrate our uh, we should run a migration what are migrations migrations are some files that we have defined in our laravel system which contains the structure of a table and when we run this migration our laravel application will make a connection with our database using the database uh, credentials that we provided just now and it will create those tables that are defined in the migration files so if you're wondering where are these migrations file located it's inside database migrations here right so by default laravel run some migrations okay after the first installation so for that the command we should run to uh, run this migration is php artisan migrate okay so now see it's asking like whether i want to create this database or not so yes i definitely want to create it so it has created the database okay now let's run php artisan serve again go to your browser hit refresh here there it should go away right all right so this is how our application looks right now so we can here see at the bottom the version of laravel and php what we are using great so if i open my database so in my case i'm using mysql workbench uh, in your case you can use php my admin or mysql workbench that's totally up to you okay all right so we should see the list of our database in here it's laravel cred app db right if i open this like view the tables then i can see a lot of tables have been created okay and how this got created this got created when we ran the command php artisan migrate so by default uh, laravel runs this migrations and create these tables for us right all right so now our application setup is done now let's move on to build the actual project okay so we'll not close this terminal we'll keep the server running we'll keep our uh, application running in the background so i will open a new terminal by clicking the plus sign here all right okay so now the first thing i would like to do is i would like to create the models as laravel is a mvc uh, framework so i will stick with it like model view controller so what is a model model is basically a blueprint of the class okay so uh, sorry a blueprint of a table so we can say that a model is very much like a table we have and using that model we can interact with our database with our tables all right what are controllers controllers are the intermediate person okay who 
talks with the database also and who talks with the view also so suppose if a view wants some data from the database then uh, it will tell the controller then the controller will get the data from the uh, database and then the controller will return the data to the view so this is one kind of mbc design pattern i am talking about there can be various kind of mbc design patterns that people implement so if you are th uh, thinking that i am speaking too much so let's not waste time and dive right in and let me show you that how easy it is to create a cred app in laravel all right so the command is php artisan make model so uh, in our case uh, we will build a let's say blog website all right so my model will be called blog and i need a migration also okay so this will create a blog and dash m this is a flag options right so i'm providing a options and saying that i need a migration file also and if i put on f also then that means i want a factory for this blog also if i hit enter now then see three files are created the first file that we will see is this blog model okay so this is our blog model if we see this file this is called the migration file you see we are inside the migrations folder here right and this is the migration file for our blog one thing to note here that our uh, blog model is named as blog but our migration file the table that will get created will be called blogs so laravel understands all these things okay if we stick to the convention then everything will work perfectly fine okay we don't have to uh, think too much about what's happening just understand the basic of how laravel works all right so this is our migration file here we will create the structure of our block table so let's just do that so table string let's say title and let's say a string again let's call this summary let's add one more And let's call this content okay so what i'm doing here i am creating the structure of the table like in a traditional way we can create a table using our database here only right so we define like uh, create this column that column and this column should be an id this column should be a string with default value this if enum then the default value should be this for the enum and the enum array should be this so all these things we can do here so by default it comes with the id okay so it will create a primary key for us in our table which is auto incremented as well it will create a, a varchar for us uh, with the title and for the uh, summary as well and we can set null values also like the summary can be nullable okay uh, rest are not null right uh, and what else we can do all right this looks good right now so we have how many columns uh, id column a string column a summary column a content column and there will be two columns created for this timestamp okay so this will create a created at and updated at at the same time okay so when i run next time php artisan migrate this command i'm not running right now don't run this command right now okay then what will happen migration will run and it will look for a new migrations and it will see this migration is new and it will run this migration and this table get created inside our database now if i want i can also put colon here and say roll back then what will happen it will roll back my current latest migration okay it will roll back my latest migration so if you want to see what i'm talking about just let's just demonstrate that uh, if uh, i think everything will work fine if i just run page partition migrate okay so here you can see we ran one migration uh, which is called create block stable and if i go to our database here so see we have our block stable here okay if you want to display it how it the structure looks okay so we have id which is primary key not null auto incremented and unique we have title varchar not null summary varchar uh, which is nullable okay it can have null values content which is text field and data type is text and not null and created and updated at which are timestamp right perfect but now if i run php artisan migrate colon roll back see it rolled back this now if i it ran a roll back right so if i now come here and hit refresh you will see there is no blog table anymore right so what happened when we run php artisan migrate this up command gets executed when we run php artisan migrate roll back this command gets executed and it drops the table all right simple right all right so blog model is done uh, our blog table structure is also done now let's 
create some fake data for our block right that we will do in factory see we also created one more file inside this factories okay this is coming from this f flag this m flag was for the migration if we haven't provided dash mf then only the block model would have been created but we created all these three files all together right so now if i open the factory file here we can specify the fake data for our uh, table block model right so we are uh, using the title and for this i will write let's say sentence like this only maybe okay what we have we have summary Let's say mm. and we have content right let's give this paragraph true okay. now we will go to one file which is called database cedar which is inside this cedar folder okay inside database cedars are uh, database cedar now here we will just uncomment this so we can by default laravel shows us how we can create uh, dummy users okay so we can do that here by uh, specifying how many dummy users we want in the same way we can do it for our blog model right but we can't use it directly like this okay this file doesn't have doesn't identify what this blog means so we need to import this class so if i click here like import class so see we are now using our blog model okay yeah okay so let's create like uh, let's say 100 blocks maybe okay now what i will do i will write a command that will run this seeder that will seed our database that means it will fill the data into the desired table that i want in my case i want to fill that block table with 100 blocks and why it will only target the block table because inside my database header i am only using the block table if i want to create users also then i can do it simply like this create 1000 users as well okay so if i now write php artisan db seed it will seed the database okay so let's not seed the block right now first let's seed the user and let's see if seed user gets created or not okay if i save this file hit enter seeding database okay 1000 is a big number but it's fast so it's it got created seeding database done if we come here i refresh i go to users check the list so see we got 1000 rows isn't it wonderful to create fake data okay if you want to if you want to work with a big data set so you can create it very easily right so these are the columns that were mentioned inside the user fact uh, sorry user uh, migration file right name email email verified password remember token timestamp so these are the exact same columns that we see here right but in our case what we need to do we need to populate the block table but we currently don't have the block table so remember what we need to do we need to run the migration but i will show you one more interesting command that will do all these things all together php artisan migrate now i will write refresh it will roll back if we if we have mentioned rollback here then what would have happened it would have migrated it would have rolled back the last migration but if i put refresh here it will roll back all the migrations and run the migrations again okay so it's kind of a refresh so it will create the blocks table user tables all the tables all together afresh right and i also want to seed the database okay so it will run the database seeder also the seed command that we performed just previously if i hit enter now let's see what happens okay so oh sorry uh I have spelling mistake here migrate right so let's fix that it's good that this error happened because uh let's go to database seeder and let's also uncomment this okay so let's create thousand blocks let's create hundred blocks and thousand users because that's usually the case right guys but in this video we won't uh, establish any relationship between the blog and the user uh, that will be for the next series when we will uh, authenticate this entire uh, blog system okay we'll see that in that uh, lecture all right so now if you run this command okay we got an error mm -hmm. okay unknown column content 
okay so there might be some error in my block factory right see so this is good this is a live error that we are solving right now let's fix this come here let's enter the command again everything is looking good right now great so now if i go to database i run this users table so we have thousand users now if i refresh this and we can see our database uh, sorry table for blocks as well and in here we have 100 blocks wonderful right okay so here we have created our model we have created our migration file for the uh, we have created the blog model we have created the blog migration file that created the entire schema for our table and we even created our blog factory which uh, loaded the dummy data into our database okay so wonderful right now let's see how we can actually perform the crud uh, crud operations for that we need a controller okay that will control all the various kind of operations that we are going to perform okay so for that the command is php artisan make controller and the name of the controller so our controller will be called block controller okay so the naming convention guys is very important you must follow the naming convention i am following okay because this is the best and standard in laravel all right so now if i hit enter so you can see we got our controller created it's inside app http controllers and the name of the controller okay by default we already had a controller which is the controller dot php class uh, by default with uh, that we get with our laravel application now if we open our block controller we have a block controller class which extends the actual controllers for the laravel application okay all right so inside this class what we need to do we need to define various methods various methods for what various methods for various various crud operations that we are going to perform like suppose uh, what we need to do we need to display all the list list of all the blocks so for that we need to create a method like display all blocks we need another method to display a single block we even need a method to delete a block create a block and edit a block okay so these different kinds of method we need to implement inside this class okay we can do that one by one or else we can leverage the uh, like command line tool of laravel application okay to easily make this for that i will first delete this block controller and i will again make it okay so php artisan make controller and now i will add a option called resource see we again got our uh, block controller back but now if i open this you can see we have a lot of methods in here right so these methods are uh, responsible for doing various operations for our crud right and we will utilize each and every one of this okay this is very easy guys okay so let's start <clears throat> now suppose if i ask you how we can go inside this method okay so we can do that using what is called routes we can easily say hey i want to go inside the index method of the block controller and we how we are going to say that we are going to say that via the http methods okay in http methods will do something that will indicate okay you want to go to the block controller index method here you go okay so let's see how we can define that so for that we need to open a file called web.php file it's inside routes folder in our root directory we have a file called web.php okay if you are coming from older laravel applications then uh, you must be wondering like where is the api.php file is now okay we'll talk about it in some later videos okay because this is not a uh, a uh, video related to building rest apis all right we will stick to our web uh, routings only okay so here you can see we already have a routing defined for us route defined for us which shows that if i use the get method of http okay i am using the route facade which comes uh, with laravel it helps us to deal with http requests and responses all right okay so using the route facade i am trying to use the get method and when i specify just a slash after my domain name in the url then a callback function will run and this callback function will return a view which is called welcome where is this located welcome view it's located inside this resource views folder and we have this welcome.blade.php okay we don't need to mention .blade.php we just need to write welcome laravel will understand all right it's smart so this is the same file guys that uh, you are viewing right now in the front end okay like here there's a word called register let's change this register x let's make it register x and see like we'll have something change here okay sorry guys <laughs> that part won't get reflected because 
it is related to some auth facades i get okay so let's change something else here no worries okay so laravel has a wonderful let's put in my name inside here laravel and ribbon okay just to demonstrate guys okay so here it is laravel and ribbon has a wonderful documentation fine so this is the file that we are seeing right now how come this is getting displayed because this is our domain right and if we specify just the slash here so this is the file that we are rendering simple okay so what will happen if i type in test here like slash test nothing will happen uh because there is nothing defined for this route right so this is what we will define in our web.php here example if i say using the get method if someone types in test then function i will use the callback function and i can simply echo one two three four five here okay come here refresh so you can see one two three four five all right okay so you got the hang of it how routes work now let's define a route for our block controller right so here we'll write get blocks at here i will write uh, the name of our controller okay that is block controller like this okay and we need to specify the method that we need to call so in my case i want to call the index method and let's name this uh, as blogs dot index all right guys okay everything's looking good now if i come here i just say echo hello from index come here right here blogs okay so here we get hello from index wonderful right because we have specified that in our web.php where it is uh, if you directly want to navigate to the file then you can press ctrl p this will open this search bar where you can write web.php okay so we are saying if someone types in slash blocks in our uh, url in our route then go to the block controller inside the block controller go to the index method all right in the same manner we can go to another method let's say we want to display a single block why not so how we can do that let's say we want to uh, name it like this first we will say slash blocks then we'll say the id of the block let's say 12 and for this let's say show and we'll call this show okay these two need to be different right because if these two naming are same then how lara will understand like which method should i call okay so here you can see the difference here right okay so now if i go to my block controller come here okay let's just get the id also why not hello from show all right so for slash blocks we get hello from index and slash blocks slash any id let's say 33 okay we get 404 not found okay let's see why that happened what we did wrong here okay here everything is looking good not so bad block controller mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so here's the mistake that we did guys we statically specified some uh static number here right well so if i specify 12 here then it will take me to the show see hmm. too few arguments okay okay so this is a different kind of error that we are encountering encountering right now but the first error was that we shouldn't uh uh, provide some static value here first let's solve this then let's deal with the other issue so we write it like this id fine it will dynamically get the id okay and pass it into this block controller right so now if i hit enter so using this by doing it like this we fixed the two error at once right and this is not necessary need to be id this can be anything okay the value that is coming in that matters right we still get 12 
all right but uh this is a like tedious way to do things right because we know that we are going to perform a cred operation okay we know that we will need all those various kinds of method inside inside here we will use all this then we have defined for, we will use all these methods that's why we have defined a resource controller in the first place right so if we have defined a resource controller laravel has given us the option to define a resource controller with all the methods defined in then it will also give us a resource route to easily get this routes in spite of specifying each route for each method okay i will remove this from here and i will write route resource okay inside here i will write blocks because it's related to blocks okay all right and then the name of our controller that is block controller class and that's it okay guys that's it now i want to show you one thing if i run php artisan route list we get the list of all the declared routes that our laravel application understands currently we have all this routes defined in our system okay so by magic <laughs> through magic you can see that we have this blocks route okay then another blocks route so this left hand side this part okay this is the part that we will specify in our url okay that is, this is our uh, you can think of it as a url part okay this is our http uh, methods get post patch everything delete right and this side shows that if i go to this if i put this in my url using a get method then it will go to the blocks controller index method and it has also named this route as blocks.index right in the same way if i type just blocks in my url and use the post method which we can't do in normal browser we need to use postman for that but just so that you can understand i'm saying it like that okay if you put blocks and you select the post method in your uh, url then it will go to the block controller store method okay and that is named as blocks.store and what is this used for this is used to store the data that is insert the data of block into our database okay so this is a background process right user won't be uh, user won't see any view for this user will only see the block form with a submit button but they will click submit and they will create the block okay all right so when they will submit the button for the block to get created then this block submission this form will get submitted into this uh path to store the form right i hope i'm clear all right so let's demonstrate that so if i just write blocks here we get hello from index it still works and if i write here 107 hello from show 107 fine so everything is working fine all right so now let's do one thing let's go to our block controller okay all right so here what we can do we can in the index method what we generally do in the index method we get all the blocks and we display all the blocks okay so this is the kind of page where we list all our blocks okay so here first what we'll do we'll create a variable called blocks then i will use the block model and this all okay so first resolve this error why this is showing red because i don't have this class right now so i will import this class so i got the block model inside here now inside that blog model i am using a static method called all okay so this is called eloquent okay so this is laravel's eloquent that it helps us to query the database in a much easier way than normally writing select all from blocks we can just write blog colon colon all and it will get all the blocks okay so this is the feature that laravel provides us which is called eloquent okay and this is wonderful guys this is time saving fast and just wonderful all right so we'll see the basics of it not will not go that much deep into it uh, but i will give you the kick you need to dive deeper on your own okay so there's an, one more command of laravel that is called dd this is called die dump okay like in traditional php what you used to do you used to uh, print our uh, array and then you write die statement at the bottom so that execution of the file stops and you can display the array same way uh, this function works like it will display whatever array you specify inside here whatever variable you want to display here okay uh, and it will stop the execution of the script as well okay so now if i come here okay so we are we have worked on the index okay so we can see we got something back right so here we can see we got a eloquent collection items 
array of 100 item array which is exactly our block 100 block that we have if i open each one okay there are a lot of keys right now okay uh, that you don't need to know right now to make it simpler what we can do we can change this response into a json response okay which is the best thing to do but when when we are creating an api but in this case we are not creating an api we will return this blocks data to a view but to show you how an api looks i will just return it like an api response like an api okay so it will be a json response block all right okay so here we have our json so here we have all our blocks blog id one two everything okay isn't it good right so we already have all the blocks data with us so let's do one thing let's now uh, create the view for this right so let's do that okay uh, i don't need this i just showed it to you what i will do instead i will return a view and I will return a view called pages dot blogs dot index. Okay, so you guys might be thinking, what is this? So this pages is a folder inside the view. All right, so resource view. So we need to create a folder called pages inside here. Pages inside pages will create another folder. Sorry guys, sorry for this. We'll create another folder which is called blogs. And inside blogs, we'll create different pages for our blog, like index.blade.php. Okay. All right. So this is done. But before we build this, I will create a standard layout for our entire application. Okay. So just follow along in this guys. Uh, inside the blog folder, we'll create another folder which is called layouts. Inside the layouts folder, I will create a new file which is called app.blade.php. All right. Uh, I will create another folder inside the views folder, uh, which is called includes. Inside includes, I will create new file uh, header.php and I will create another new file called footer.php. Okay, sorry guys, uh, not .php, footer.blade.php. Okay, these are blade templates. Using black templates, we can use some direct de derivatives very easily. I will show you what I mean in a second. Okay. All right. So this is done almost. Now we will add bootstrap inside. So for that, let's use bootstrap. Okay, sorry, my internet connection is off right now. Mm -mm. Sorry guys for this, okay. Bootstrap. The latest version is 5.3 the time i'm recording uh let's go to quick start let's copy this from here okay and let's go to our uh, layouts folder app.blade and paste this code in here all right now uh, what i will do i will uh, cut this part okay i will cut this part and I will put it in the header section and I will cut this part and I will put it in the footer section. In the app.blade, I will write includes. Okay, so the way I'm writing it, at the rate includes. Why this is working? Because this is a blade file. This is a templating engine. Okay, so currently I'm using PHP inside a uh, where in a file where I should have mostly HTMLs, right? This is how it works. Okay, it looks good. I will I need to include the header in here okay we don't need to add semicolon at the end and at the very bottom I will add in the same way footer okay so we got the header we got the footer and here I will write yield content okay you can write anything in between that doesn't matter but where you should match it with that I will just tell you so we are saying that in this file include the header include the footer and dynamically load the content here of whatever the page is dynamically load that content in here all right so we have done this now let's come here and go to index.blade in here what we need to do first we need to extend our 
layout dot app after that we'll write section okay so see here i'm writing section content okay which is pretty similar to this content right so what will happen here whatever i write inside here whatever i write inside here it will automatically get loaded here okay it will come here like this okay and how it is happening it is happening because first of all i am mentioning the same name okay and secondly i have extended the layout app all right so we can test our uh, bootstrap also if it is working or not first let's write hello from index okay and let's go to our header here okay and uh, come here bootstrap let's search for navbar i need is just a basic navbar okay let's copy this this looks good mm -mm. let's just copy here let me minimize the yes i hope this is now good okay so we don't need all this right now or we can keep it like this we we'll, can change it to add block let's say why not all right and here i will write dot container and i will close this div inside the footer okay now let's test it out if it's working at all or not all right so now if i write uh, slash blogs then i can see that i am displaying the bootstrap install the bootstrap properly and i'm inside my index method as well but i'm just only returning the view now see i've created this variable but i'm only returning the view okay so let's work on the view a little more first then i will load the dynamic data in here so let's i will not style it that much guys because it's not a front end course it's entirely a back end development thing right all right so let's call this list all blocks let's create a table class table table striped t head tr id uh let's say title and summary edit delete Okay, let's not let's write it down only. T R T D. I need how many five, right? Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Good, right? All right. Now let's get that data inside this. So here, how we can pass this dollar blocks variable inside this view? We can simply do the uh, do this using a array like this. So we'll open an array like this. We'll mention a key here, and we'll pass on the value like this. Okay. So if I now I can use this key inside my index. Okay. Once again, I will use this kind of syntax. Okay. And I will use for else. What is this? This is like checking also. Like if the count is greater than zero, then this block will get executed. If the count of my variable is zero, then this block will get executed. Super, right? So here, the name of my variable is dollar blocks. Okay. In here, dollar block. And now we can use a syntax like this. Okay, to open PHP. Okay, and here I can write blog dash id dash title summary, and this should be an anchor tag with class btn btn edit. Sorry, btn btn primary let's call this edit copy this
delete okay and let's call this danger and in here let's okay uh, I can see a mistake here where's the TR okay all right now it's good right so in here also we need a TR and one TD with false span of five no result found perfect right if I come here hit refresh enter great so we have all our blogs displayed here right now if I want to view a single blog then what I can do I can put the title inside the anchor tag right so anchor tag and the title in here okay the what should be the path of this like I showed you PHP artisan route list the command okay so now we want to go to a single blog that is blocks dot show right how we can do that we can use a get method and we will need to specify some id blocks slash id okay and the name of this route is blocks dot show perfect so our route is already defined so we'll just write like this route and inside here blocks dot show but we need to pass the id as well right so here we just open an array again and i will write blog dollar blog right and now let's come here hit refresh enter if i click here yeah you can see hello from show one hello from show eight now let's uh, build the show blade so for that i will create a new file inside blogs i will write show dot blade dot php i will copy everything from index paste it here okay uh, what I don't need I need I will change this title as single blog all right I don't need this not this okay and 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 what else you can change mm, we don't even need the anchor tag in this place now we need this edit and delete this will do guys okay because designing it doesn't matter that much i just want to show you how an thread application works in laravel right all right now let's come to our controller so here we are receiving the id that we are sending in right so using that id what we need to do we need to find the blog right but in laravel there's one thing called route model binding laravel automatically will understand like okay you're sending me a id of an blog let me search for you if this blog exists or not then you can directly use this blog you don't need to query the database from your end as well so how i can use leverage that functionality using route model binding so i will write here blog the name of the model and here the name of the variable which can be anything but it should be like similar to the model name right so blog now in here if i just dd dollar blog guys and note one thing also like uh, in our index file here we are not passing any uh, particular column to this the id to this like this right we are passing the blog entirely so if i go back here click this so here you can see we directly pass the blog here id1 let's go with id6 here attributes here you can see we have the entire blog here right so let's go to our block controller once again okay what i will do i will use this return view statement come here paste it and i should go to show it should call blog it should the variable is also blog and i guess this should work okay great right okay so now the next thing we need to do is that we need to add our own blog right so here we have a anchor tag for that so there we need to implement something so let's go to our header okay uh, let's put okay 
So add blog, what will happen if I click on add blog? If I click on add blog, a form will display where we can add the blog, okay? And how it matches with our route. So here you can see a route called blogs.create and it's a get method with the URL like blog slash create, okay? Here it's not in yellow, it's in white. Yellow indicates like it's an ID or some kind of thing, but in white it means it's static, normal, all right? So blog slash create. So if I write it, it will, it will open a, a, a form for us, okay? So what I will do, I will come here, I will write route logs dot create, 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 create. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, make the form also inside here, new file, create dot blade dot PHP. Okay. I will copy something from in here, show, paste it here. Okay. I will remove all these things. Now what I need, I don't need this single blog. I need add blog here and uh, I need a form, right? Form. Okay. Let's give it a class say form. Okay. Form group uh, label. Let's say title input text name name id and for uh, let's keep it title okay let's give it a class also form control let's copy this now i will change this to summary and this to content right sorry oh god content right now i need a input type submit name add blog class btn btn success now for the action where should this form be submitted it should get submitted to this route blogs dot store here okay as you can see it the url should be just blogs but it should be a post method right so here route and store and the method should be post All right now if we go here come here refresh click on add blog okay so what happened we went to this blog controller create method but nothing is inside here that's why it showed as a blank page so here what we need to do we need to return the view right that is pages dot create and we won't be passing any variables because it's just a page that shows the form all right perfect right okay so without inserting anything let's just click submit okay so it showed 419 page expired okay so something bad has happened guys okay if you want to i will just give you a glimpse of postman right now i won't show you what postman is but you can understand like what i'm doing using this I, i'm using this url it was a post method right and in the headers i will write accept application json and hit enter so it is giving me an error csrf token mismatch okay so i showed you just to demonstrate the error here okay so what the error is whenever we are submitting a form using laravel okay whenever we are submitting a form using laravel it should always contain a CS, csrf token what is a csrf token it's a cross site request forgery token that prevents sql injection okay so it prevents many security vulnerabilities uh, it reduces those sec uh, security risks that we have uh, when we submit data through our forms okay so we will use that csrf like this only simple right okay so now if i come here go back refresh hit enter okay so now see i'm inside slash blocks but this is the store not the index right because it's a post method so now we are inside this method right if you want to see then we can dd the request okay so in this request the entire data we are submitting through the form is getting collected in this request and we can dd that request right so i will submit and here in the attributes that there are zero parameters request 
we'll check the request right it's a request that we sent a form okay so the parameters we have five parameters one is the csrf token okay that laravel has created for us the title summary content is null and the add block button has a value of submit right all right so now let's actually store this data into our database and validate the data as well so i will create a, a variable called validated data and i will use this validate method to validate our data okay like this so for title it should be required we can put multiple checks like this with a pipe it should be a required field and it should be string okay for summary we it is also not required it is nullable right then we should mention that also summary is nullable but it should be a string if it happens to be okay and sorry content is also required and string right so what happens if this validation is satisfied then the control will come here okay if this is the validation is okay or else if this validation error is met if there is some error in our validation then the control will go back to the previous page from where the data was submitted okay so to demonstrate that to you let's come here refresh now submit the page refreshed but you see we are on the same page as if nothing happened but it went to that method stored method it looked for some validation the validation errors it found some validation errors and it returned us back to the same page but where are the errors okay so we need to display them on our own okay but laravel has created those error already how we can do that we will come here we'll write error sorry error okay if there is an error for title okay if there is an error for title then what is the message inside show me the message okay guys i'm not styling it uh, particularly anything i'll just put it in a span okay in the same way if there are for summary and if there are any errors for content then display them now if i come here hit refresh submit now the title field field is required the content field is required great then if i type in the title i type in the summary but i don't type in the content submit okay so i'm now getting this error only but all these two fields that have sub, that have filled the data those are gone i have to do the same work again so to give a better user experience to our users we can do something like this it will hold the old value for you okay old summary uh, value old content okay so now if i type in here something type in here something and i okay so those value remains and i just get the error for this field right okay now let's proceed so if there are no errors let's if i just dd this validated data let's see what happens this control will come here when there is no error right so i will not do any errors right now let's see what happens okay so here we get the our array beautiful right with all the values now we will want to store this in our database so we will use eloquent for this we'll use the blog model we will write create and inside create i will write validated data like this and once it is created i want to return redirect to route where after creating a blog where should we uh, return to we should return to the index page okay let's return to the index page with a message okay the message will be key will be success and the message will be blog created success fully what this statement will do after creating the blog it will redirect us to this route blogs.index that means list of all blogs with and it will also set a session for us with the key success and it will hold the value this in it okay so it will create a session for us as when it will take us back to the index page so we can view this session in the index page also okay so here like if 
शशंक हैज सक्सेस की और राइट देन डिस्प्ले गेट द मैसेज फॉर दैट सक्सेस की राइट आई होप दिस विल वर्क ऑल राइट लेट्स कम हियर रिफ्रेश माय फर्स्ट ब्लॉग याहू हेलो समरी ओके नाउ लेट्स सबमिट इट ओके या यू कैन सी वी गेट दिस मैसेज ब्लॉग क्रिएटेड सक्सेसफुली नाउ इफ आई हिट रिफ्रेश द मैसेज वेंट अवे इट वाज अ फ्लैश मैसेज एंड if we come down here the blog is not created guys okay something happened okay uh the error didn't showed up okay let's see why okay so the error that happened uh, i got it like what the error might have happened okay so the first thing is it's not create it created it's create now also i think it won't work it will throw an error okay i want but i want to show you that error Uh, let's write anything here okay submit okay so it says add title to fillable property to allow mass assignment on block okay so it's another security feature you can say of laravel where it prevents mass assignment to the table block table right so we need to specify like in which column we need to do mass assignment so for that we'll write protected sorry not dollar protected it's a uh, Access modifier protected. Uh, dollar uh, fillable equal to title. We need to fill the title. The summary. The content. Right. That's all. Okay. ID and timestamps is managed automatically. Now, if I come here, go back here, refresh my title, my summary. my content uh, content right submit block created successfully refresh it went away and here you can see my title my summary my 101st block okay 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 so we successfully uh, displayed all list of blogs a single blog and we have also created a, a blog using uh, validations also right now let's put proper url in this navbar it should take us to the all list uh, home page it should also take us to the home page and if i write like this only it shouldn't open this it should inspire it open the uh, blocks page right so let's fix those things for that i will go to the header inside header in here i will write route blocks.index okay for home also i will write route blog dot index and and where else mm -mm -mm. okay and this page should also automatically redirect to the blog so for this we'll go to web dot route web web blade not web blade guys sorry web dot php the web route file okay here i will write route okay so let's utilize this function only whenever someone tries to go in here he will be return redirect to route block dot index all right now let's see if it works all right so we are redirect to our blog page if i click nav bar it's also working home is also working and add blog is also working great so now we just need to uh, build this edit and delete okay so let's do it quickly so let's go to block controller sorry block controller okay this is a block controller okay so in the same manner like we created a form to display uh, we created a form to add the blog and then we submitted it to the store method in the same manner we will display a form for the edit and then will that is blog dot edit and we'll submit it for the actual edit update operation that is blog dot update so let's create this view edit okay inside in here new file edit dot blade dot php okay so i will copy the content from the create dot blade come here paste it okay this will be added block all right for the values 
uh, I, will, I will just show you what the values will be. Let's just remove all this for now. Okay. Uh, okay. This will be edit block. Okay. And 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 what else? Okay. Now we need to go to the block controller. So if I write blogs slash the blog ID, then edit, then I should go to this blogs dot edit. Okay. And it should return the edit view return view blocks dot edit okay but i need to pass the blog with it also like right which blog will get edited okay so same way i will use route model binding in here also block block okay i will show you one more function like compact if you're just only sending one key okay i will just write blog here okay all right everything is looking good so this blog we can use it like a variable in my edit right so let's go there click on edit and in here i have that blog variable so i will write uh dollar blog and what was it title right this is summary and this is content perfect now let's change the action so now it should go to blocks dot update this right but it should also get a id with it in the submission also and the method should be not post or get it should be put or patch okay so how we can do that for the id we can simply come here write blog and then the blog like we used to do okay that is done and how we will mention like we haven't ever used like put here okay we can't use it like this way we can either specify get or post only here but we can write it like this method and then here we'll write put okay so if i kind of think like this is uh, overriding it right overriding it so my method is post i have mentioned here but it is actually put method so now if i save this i come here Hit refresh click on edit won't work because in the index file also we need to change uh, 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 index file okay so here is edit okay so we need to do the url like this right so route and it should go to edit all right mm -mm. Mm -hmm. All right, done. Okay. Missing required parameters. Missing parameter blog. Okay. So what error we got? You might be thinking like, okay, fine. Uh, when I was just mentioning blogs, I just wrote the blogs here, like this blogs editor blogs create or blogs index but when one we needed to pass a variable we also passed a variable with an array but here we have a third parameter also how we will deal like do we need to perform some concatenation in the url no okay we just have one variable here right so we'll just pass that variable rest laravel will take care on its own so write blog and we'll write blog now let's see if the error is gone or not fine the error went away right so if i hover on this edit you can see blogs then id then the name edit is already there i haven't done anything right now if i click here and number one great i can see my blog okay let's edit our own blog okay so it's like this okay edit blog now if i hit submit i will display a blank page right yes and now where it went it went inside this update method okay so the first thing what you should notice here is that it's using an id okay like which block should get updated so we'll use route model binding okay and here what we need to do we need to perform some validations right so we did that in our store method we'll copy this we'll come here we'll paste it okay so here we'll just change this required to sometimes okay sometimes right all right 
and 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 uh, what else i have already my blog i need to update that i don't want to create so i have already my blog here coming from my route model binding i need to perform update on this an update of what of this validated data right so once i do that i want to return to where i want to return to my uh, actual blog why not the blog that i have updated so let's show let's see if i can pass in this variable in here or not okay definitely i can so the blog variable because remember show here needs the variable okay with message blog edited successfully okay i hope this will work let's find out all right so my title is live fine if i hit submit okay so here you can see my title is live but we didn't see any message because we haven't implemented the uh, session checking with this success message that we have implemented in our index so let's copy that now let's come here go back refresh let's put an exclamation mark here and here submit blog editor successfully so guys wonderful right our update function is already done only we are left with is delete so let's do that in route then this list okay uh, using php artisan route list we see that there's a destroy also we can go to the destroy method also how we can go to the destroy method using the delete http method okay block slash then id of the block and then this delete okay so for that what i need to do i need to come to my index and in here where i have delete i can't use a anchor tag because i can't directly go to the url right i need to submit a form using a delete method right guys so the action will be it's clear the action will be destroy what i need to destroy i need to destroy this particular blog the id sorry blog all right uh, and the method will be host inside form i will definitely have the csrf token and the method is not actually post it's actually delete right and i will have a uh, button the type is submit name is uh, delete button let's say and here delete okay so everything is doing good here now let's come to the block controller here we'll again use block dollar block and in here we'll just write delete this block block delete and after deleting uh, let's go back to our uh, index page let's all right let's go back to our index page but the message is block deleted block deleted successfully let's see if it works refresh okay the styling has gone mm, but that's not a problem i guess but let's let's bring it in no worries class btn btn danger all right refresh now if i want to delete the blog that we have created let's do that okay blog deleted successfully if i delete number one blog blog deleted successfully so yeah guys we have created our own laravel cred application okay and what we have done in this entire thing i will just explain and give you the brief of it okay so we have uh, created our laravel project then we have connected our database then we have created the blog model the blog model that uh, gives us many elo eloquent uh, operations that we can perform on that model then we also created our blog migration file where we have the schema uh, to define our blog table then we also created the factory for blogs for creating dummy data for our block table then we created the created the resource controller okay where we have defined all the various operations of our cred operations like uh, different methods for delete update and showing right we also utilized the web.php file where we have defined route for our application and we understood that how we can use the resource route as well okay 
and we have also seen the uh, php partition route list command to display all the registered routes in our laravel application we also validated our data uh, we displayed error messages as well using stations okay so overall this was a very we, we even learned about uh, route model binding right uh, so and we also completed uh, the basic layout of our view like where we have a app.blade file and it is yielding all the other views so yeah this is a basic structure of an mvc uh, website you will build in future so i hope you guys like this video if you liked it then definitely do like this video uh, subscribe to my channel if you like uh, my contents and definitely comment what you didn't understand or what you liked about this video if you want another video on a detailed topic i will drop it very soon like it will be a continuation of this video where i will build in the authentication and authorization over this block system okay and perform various other functionalities in there okay and i hope to see you there till then goodbye take care